Thank you, Abba. Appreciate uh, that. Uh, we're joined right now by Mr. Saad Moseni. Mr. Moseni, appreciate you talking to India today. Thank you there. So my first question is because, you know, you're the best person to ask right now. You've got your uh, network running in Afghanistan. What is the current ground situation in the country? Well, the, the, the Taliban obviously uh, is attempting to consolidate its uh, hold over the country. There are pockets of resistance, as you've mentioned in your story earlier, that uh, in Panjshir and Andarab and, uh, and some other areas. So they have to consolidate that rule. Um, and they also have to win over politicians, uh, opposition politicians like Hamid Karzai and, and, uh, and others who are outside, Abdullah Abdullah. Uh, and so forth, and to an extent, uh, when the hearts and hearts and minds of Afghans, given what's going on at the airport, the Taliban have realized that there's a sense of panic, and they have to actually address uh, people's concerns. And last but not least, they have to win the support of the international community, uh, because Afghanistan is not just facing a political crisis, but it's also facing a humanitarian as well as an economic crisis. You know, sir, before I actually ask you about uh, the Taliban, your interaction, your network there, the interference, I want to ask you, we've seen a little bit of what's happening in Kabul. I'd like to ask you on what is happening in, say, the outskirts, uh, what's happening in the Panjshir Valley. Is there a resistance shaping up? How far has the Taliban entered there? I don't have, I mean, the Taliban, as of last night, had not entered Panjshir. They they, they had vowed to start their military operations. I think that was put on hold. The hope is still to resolve this through peaceful means, through dialogue. Um, and I know that they were sending a delegation into Kabul to, to continue those discussions. Um, outside of Kabul, it's relatively stable, uh, quiet. Uh, reports that we're getting from Herat, Kandahar, and Mazar Sharif is that things are returning back to normal. Um, our Kabul is a little bit more, you know, we have more issues in terms of the banks, which are still closed. Uh, many of the shops are still closed. All those smaller merchants have opened up and there's trade. A lot of people have not returned to work. Um, so it's still a week on, uh, there are still some nerves. Having said that, you know, you see people on the streets, people feel safe enough. I think that uh, the, the big concern was anarchy and lawlessness. That hasn't come, uh, thankfully. Uh, things, you know, it's a situation is very fluid. Mm -hmm. now, people are wondering about the next government. Uh, the CIA chief was apparently in Kabul last night. Met with the Taliban leader Mullah Brada. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot going on. Now, what you know, and a lot of questions. What's going to happen to the airport after the 31st? What will the new government look like? Will it be inclusive? Will it be broad based? Um, what's going to happen to, you know, the, the likes of Amrullah Saleh and Ahmad Masidi Panchair? Um, much, much to wonder, much, much to worry about in the coming weeks. Mr. Mosaini, how do you see things at the airport develop? Because we are seeing these terrifying visuals that are coming through. Are things going to get worse as, uh, you know, the deadline closes in? You would think so. Thousands of people uh, who are waiting to get out, uh, and we know that most probably will not be able to get out because they don't have the documentation, they haven't applied for, for, for the um, SIVs or the P2 visas, they, they don't qualify as uh, uh, individuals at risk. So a lot of these people are just like, you know, not well-educated Afghans who want to get out. So there's going to be a real scramble as the date draws near. And the concern we have is that whatever you've seen at the airport till now, the scenes, say, on the 1st of September or the 2nd of September are going to be far worse. Well, that's, uh, that's quite ominous, uh, Mr. Moseni. But, you know, you said things are right now relatively peaceful. We are picking up sporadic reports of violence, especially against women, where women are being picked up, handed over to the Talibs. Is there any truth or is it just because at these times there's so much misinformation that also floats about? You know, you really, I mean, it's, it's there difficult to confirm or... Uh, listen, uh, intimidation of, of individuals is something that happens in any country. The question is, is it much higher than it was, say, three weeks ago? Um, and we, we're very careful in terms of, you know, reporting on these things until we, we've, 
uh, um, have done our due diligence and have checked the facts. I'm sure that there are incidents like this. We've seen it in the provinces. The UN has reported on these, the Human Rights Commission and so forth. Uh, but the, 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 the question should be, is it institutionally sanctioned actions by, by members of the Taliban? And that's difficult to ascertain. As a matter of fact, it's, it's, it, you would struggle to find any evidence of that. But nonetheless, um, we've been told, certainly by the Taliban, if there are reports like that, and we're, by the way, free to report on these things, that they would deal with these issues. Mm-hmm. Um, they're already dealing with people taking, you know, for example, there was this tradition the first few days of people walking in and taking people's vehicles. That has slowed right down. People have had assets returned to them. Um, so for the Taliban, I, I mean, I think taking over this country is also going to be challenging, and they're already facing these challenges. You know, I want to talk a bit about uh, Tolu News, uh, Mr. Maseni, because you're walking a rather tight rope. Uh, you're independent media. You're technically to speak truth to power, which is truth to the Taliban here. Are you talking to all sides of the parties? Who Are you talking to the Taliban? How are you doing it? Well, I mean, it's, 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 it's a funny situation for us to be in because the Taliban have not taken have not quite taken over the country okay, the government they, they don't have ministers there's no president there's no cabinet there's some caretakers across the city but nothing like a proper government so we have to wait for them to come in before we can actually judge as to how they behave towards the media right now we're reporting on all sides the situation in Panjshir, for example we report we speak to people inside and we speak to people outside um and you know the same with many other issues around the country. Um, they keep saying that they will allow uh, organizations such as ours to continue with our work, but only time can tell. Do you have faith that will happen? We, uh, we deal with, uh, with facts on the ground, uh, the proofs in mm-hmm. the pudding. We'll let the, their actions uh, tell us in terms of uh, how serious they are. Have you been, you said, you know, there is no government, like you said, it's a, it's a peculiar situation. Uh, that Afghanistan is in right now, especially for you to you know work out of there. Have you been given an informal directive by the Taliban on what you can carry, what you cannot carry? Have they come in and spoken to your lot there? They've come in and they've spoken to us only to reassure us that uh, uh, you know business as usual is good enough for them. But but surely it's uh, it's uh, it's expected. Uh, any government will have media laws. They will have directives. Um, and this government, this new government, incoming government will be no different to other governments. Even in today's environment, we have media laws. Uh, the media is, uh, you know, it's, we, we enshrine freedom of expression in our constitution. We still have laws, though, that dictate how a media operator functions in the country. And I think the Taliban will have their own ways of dealing with the media, and we just have to wait for them to come in mm-hmm. before we see those directives. So no official, unofficial directive right now that what you can carry, what you can't carry. Have you pulled off certain content because of whatever I'd seen on Tolo? Yeah. You know, you, you've been carrying a lot of music, you've been carrying a lot of other shows. Have you pulled that out? We've pulled, uh, we've pulled uh, some of the music shows. Uh, the stuff that, you know, had too much flesh was a bit too risque. Some of the soap, soap operas, which were controversial. Uh, it was just an internal decision to do so until we sort of figured out what the new environment was going to be like. But otherwise, I mean, a, a lot of our programs are, you know, pretty much what they were. News is 100% what it was before, but even our entertainment programs, with the exception of music and some soap operas, are pretty much the same. Mr. Mosani, how are you keeping your uh, channel afloat functioning? Because there are so many people that I used to be in touch with who used to work for Tolo News. Most of them are already not in the country. How are you managing to keep the channel afloat? Your, most of your employees well, are either looking at getting out or have already gotten out. We expect probably a third of our workforce to leave um, or have left already. Um, there's a scramble to recruit new people. Um, and we've hired a lot of people the last week or so. Uh, it's a it's sad to see you know the sort of the upper middle class of Afghanistan disappear all that capacity um, but you know we have no choice but to recruit new people um, and we'll continue I mean mm-hmm. impo- continuity is very important for us. Mr. Mosani, can I ask you a question? I probably do know the answer to that. In the last week, you said you've made a lot of hires. How many of them have been women, sir? Well, uh, of the 12 hires just the last few days, two have, two have been women. 
All right. Well, that's. Um, I also want to ask you. Have um, I continue to see some of uh, you know your Tolo reporters who are women going out and reporting. Uh, we've already spoken to a lot of uh, women news anchors, presenters mm. who've been pulled off air on state-run channels like RTA Pashto. Um, are you continuing to put women out there, or is there an informal directive that has gone now from your side as well to the women who are working for your organisation? No, no, we'd like to continue having women on our screens uh, and also doing general reporting, whether it's on, on the streets or going in and interviewing officials, including Taliban officials. No, our policy, we have championed women's rights uh, for two decades. We're not going to give up on that uh, so easily. Um, have there been incidents, uh, any untoward incident involving your women's staff, especially on the field? Nothing serious. I mean, you know, they usually there is someone may hurl a, an abuse at, at one of our reporters, male or female, but that's the case anywhere in the world. Are they dressing differently? Uh, from what, you know, the, we are, our journalists uh, that you're familiar with, as a matter of fact, a lot of them have left, but the new journalists who've come in, our directive is dress as you, as you would normally, and uh, we're, we're there to support them. You know, I want to ask you for somebody who's followed this through as well. You, we saw what happened in 96 to 2001, sir. You know, there's so much which is going on about this Taliban being more moderate, the very fact that they've told you you can continue to function. Do you see them as being more inclusive or you want to wait and, you know, and talk about that maybe later when some time passes? Well, I, we, we have to judge them on what we see today and what we see today, they seem to be different, but uh, it'd be interesting to see what their cabinet's going to look like. Uh, and once they're in government, it'll be interesting to see if, if you know, if they become more restrictive or not, because right now it's, it's you know, they, they, the country functions based on what we've had over the last 20 years, our laws, our constitution, everything. Um, so we just have to wait. I think it's, it's probably not wise to rush into any decisions just yet. I want to ask you one quick question, sir. You know, there's a lot of money that you have invested as well. You're also a businessman. Um, a lot of, uh, you know, as we speak, we know there's, uh, there are a lot of empires wrapping up. There's a lot of money being pulled out of Afghanistan. Are you looking to continue with Tolo TV? Well, uh, as I mentioned before, continuity, continuing with our work is one of our priorities. Um, you know, we have a we have a we have an obligation as business people. We we also have a moral obligation uh, to the country. And you know, Tolo and other news outlets or media outlets have been sort of the beacon of hope. For the country, we've helped facilitate social change. We've informed, entertained, educated, and uh, we take we've taken this role very, very seriously. And as a result, we'd like to continue. Well, I hope you would, sir. And I appreciate you taking out the time and joining us. Uh, like I said, we Thank can't you. even imagine it's a it's a very tight rope that you're walking, and we do hope so that you continue to walk it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.